She's a powerful woman of God. Every promise that you receive from God, nobody can change that. She's a woman of fervent prayer, kingdom principle and integrity. Known as a powerhouse full of practical and applicable wisdom from the word of God. We have a great, big, mighty army. And because the enemy blows something in the air, it creates confusion in the church. Sisters and brothers start fighting each other in the church. That's exactly how the enemy takes advantage over the church. Her mission is to teach women. Miracle Arena for all nations. Let's welcome Pastor Eunice Landu. so much Pastor Joanne my friend I can't believe I'm standing here you know <laughs> after all these years just now you invite me really <laughs> really <laughs> no thank you so much I'm, I'm really honored to be here in this place um, just like she said Joanne is a woman of integrity um, a woman that does not play when it comes to the things of God you know, you may, some of you have never even heard of me, and you may wonder, if you have a friend that is a preacher, why have you never let her come? Because she will hear from the Lord before she does anything, and she won't do something just because to please somebody else, and I appreciate her for that, and you guys are blessed to have a woman of God, such as Pastor Joanne Dunso. I always tell her, if we were not in ministry ourselves, I would be probably her spiritual daughter. <laughs> I would probably be following her every single way. You know, there is, it's one thing to have someone. You know, I'm not going to repeat what she just said. No, I'm not going to do that because my time is running. But I really appreciate you and thank you for inviting me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for trusting me to feed your sheep today. Um, before we take a seat, I want us to give a standing ovation for the man of God, a prophet, Kofi Danso. Yes. I honor him, and I know that if he did not agree, we would not be here. Because although we are in ministry, we submit completely to our husband. What they say goes. Amen. So thank you so much, man of God. I know he's not here right now, but I want one more time to honor the man of God in this place. And, of course, like I said, without our husband saying yes, we won't be able to do what we are doing. I want to honor my husband, Apostle Gideon Landu, for allowing me, for releasing me and allowing me to be here. Not only allowing me to be here, but completely supporting me. I am the woman that I am today because of his work, because of his apostleship. This is why I am what I am today. So I honor you. I know he's watching. I honor you, baby. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. Praise God. And now you, before you take a seat, just greet your neighbor. Say, you are blessed and highly favored. And you may take your seat. Praise be to God. Who has been blessed over this past weekend? I came in yesterday, and I regret that I didn't come earlier because the way I was blessed, it was just amazing. Last year, or two years ago, I was supposed to be here, but she decided to plan the conference the same time I had a conference overseas, so I wasn't here. But I was able to follow glimpses of what happened here, and it is truly an honor for me to be here. And, you know, Pastor Bennett, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, there's something upon the life of that woman that if you do not believe there's something wrong with you. <laughs> if you did not receive, there's something wrong with you because she definitely carries the anointing, and I honor her wherever she is right now as well. There are certain things that were said yesterday that I want to start today with just to refresh us a little bit before we continue because I do believe that the Lord is doing a continuous work throughout this weekend. Everything the Lord is doing, it's all connected to each other. Um, the reason why I'm saying that is because when, I w when we were here for the workshop and Pastor Ben started ministering, 
before we started answering any questions. And I was like, oh, my God, this is exactly what I felt like I was going to share with the people. So, God, what do you have for me? And after the service, I was with uh, my daughter, and we were sharing, and the Lord dropped another word on, in, my, in my spirit. And I was like, yes, God, thank you, Jesus. And then we came in the evening, and guess what? <laughs> Dr. Bynum started sharing what I had received from the Lord. I'm like, okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> So this morning, wake up early in the morning, and I was like, God, what do you have from your people? Because the word that Prophet B Prophetess Bynum brought yesterday, it was really an answer to many questions that were asked during the workshop. And when things like this happen, you know that the Lord is here. And you know that God is really listening to every thought and to every concern that the people have. The Lord has set this together for you. He wants to bless you. And it is very important for you to make sure that you are connected enough to be able to receive every single thing that the Lord has for you. I do believe that after this conference, that a woman, maybe not two, maybe not three, but a woman will be transformed, will be changed, will be completely transformed and changed by what is taking place in this house. Don't just come as a spectator. Don't just come, oh my gosh, I heard her speak, and it, like Prophetess Bynum said, and it was powerful, but nothing happened in your life. You have to write down the words that the Lord is speaking to you. You have to go over them and make sure that what he has spoken unto you comes to pass. But the way the word of God can come to pass over your life is if you meditate on it day and night. And we don't just stop there. We don't stop there. We don't just come and we listen to the word. We shout amen. We are all excited. We leave this place. We can tell our friends about it. We post about it. We write about it. But then nothing changes in our life. And oftentimes I find the reason why nothing changes in our life is because we hear. We are excited. But it has no good ground. There is no good ground for the seed to grow within us. So when we say we came here to fight like a girl, and I know that Mama Joanne already said, not only are we fighting, but we have already won. You came here not just to fight, but you came here to win. The reason why you are here is for you to win. The reason the Lord has been addressing your issue from the beginning till now is so that you can win. The reason most of you were able to say, I heard what the woman of God said and it's exactly my testimony, is because God is showing you that even though you are going through what you are going right now, I can do for you what I have done for them. The reason why we tell our testimonies is to show you because most of the time you only see the glory part. You don't see the struggling part. And oftentimes you feel like you are the only one going through this and that nobody else understands. But God puts together his vessels for you to show you that they also went through it. And if they were able to conquer, if they were able to overcome, you can overcome as well. You can conquer as well. The Bible says that Elijah was a man of same nature as us. If he was able to do the things that he did, you can do the same things that he did. God is, has not changed. His word is yes and amen. Everything that he promised, he will do. Everything that he did with your neighbor, he can do with you as well. Everything that he did with, you, with your pastor, with the people around you, the people that you look up to, he can do with you as well. So one of the things that we were reminded of during uh, the last two days that I've been here is that we all have a mess and that God wants to turn your mess into a message. Just as he can use anybody, and just as he used my testimony and, used, and turned it into a message today, he can use the mess that you are in today into a message and into an inspiration for somebody else. And as we have understood is that all of us have been broken. We have all been broken. We were told that we all have uh, experienced trauma one way or another. There is not a single person in this place that can arise and say, I have not experienced any trauma in my life. Some of our traumas are worse than others, but we've all been there. We've all experienced it. That's why you'll hear somebody like, I'm going through that too. And my testimony is, is similar to yours. Oh, you've been through that. I've been through that as well. We've all experienced it. 
Whether you are a Christian, an unbeli- a, a believer, or a non-believer, we've all experienced it. But there is a difference between those who believe and those who do not believe. And that difference is that we have a Redeemer. The difference is that we have hope. We are not people without hope. We are not hopelessness. hopeless. We are not living in hopelessness, but we have hope in Christ. We were, hallelujah, everyone has experienced trauma. Hallelujah. It is not what has been done to you that destroys you, but it is how you react to what has been done to you. So that makes me understand that it's very important for us as believers to understand or to even know how to fight the things that come against us. So fight like a girl. Fight like a girl. That's the theme of this conference, right? Fight like a girl. What is fight like a girl? How do you fight like a girl? How do you fight like a girl? How do girls fight? How do girls fight? I was wondering, how do girls fight? How do girls fight? Mantarabre. Okay, let's not go too spiritual. They're saying on their knees praying. Yes, yes, we fight on our knees praying. But what does that mean? Because if we take a physical example to bring it into a conference, then we have to also take what it is physically to bring it in the spiritual so that every single time I see people fighting or I am in a fight, I can be reminded of the physical so that I can apply it in the spiritual. Am I speaking to somebody here? Am I speaking to somebody here? How do girls fight? If you see two girls fighting and they're going with their fists at it, Most of the time when people say, oh, this girl fights like a man, right? So girls don't really fight with fists, right? It's not, not, it's not really like we, we attribute that to a man because men, they're the ones, you know. So when a girl fights with a fist, we say, oh, she fights like a man. But the conference is fight like a girl. Don't fight like a boy. Don't fight like a, girl, a man. But fight like a girl. The first way girls fight is what? Oh, yes, we know how to pull each other down with our mouth. We know how to tell you how it is with their mouth, with words. Girls fight with their mouth, with words, slander, all of these things. That's number one. Number two, what do they do next? Right? They pull hair. Number three, what else do they do? Nails, they use their nails to scratch each other. That's how girls fight, right? So if you see a fight and it's like pulling hair and slandering and because men, they just come in and then and then done, right? But a girl comes, before even they start fighting, there is a lot of slander, there's a lot of words back and forth, you know? And then there is pulling of hair or all at the same time, I'm not a fighter like that, but I've seen fights, you know? And then they go with their nails, they get with the pulling of hair. So how do we apply that in the spiritual area? How do we fight like girls spiritually? How do we pull hair? How do we slender? How do we use our words to disqualify our enemy or our opponent? How do we use words to disqualify our opponent? How do we pull down the strongholds, I'm sorry, the hair of our, of our, of our opponent when it's coming against us? How do I pull down the hairs of depression when it's coming against me? How do I go with my nails at it? How do I go to, with my nails out, uh, at it? To just destroy the flesh. To just destroy its face. To just destroy that which attracted me to it in the first place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to somebody today? Am I speaking to somebody today? Let us go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. What does it say as fight like a girl? How do you fight like a girl? Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3. And we are going to read from verse 3 till 6. Verse 3. 
For though we walk in the flesh, mm -hmm. we do not war after the flesh. Yes. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, right. but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, mm -hmm. casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every mm -hmm. thought to the obedience of Christ. Mm -hmm. And having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Hallelujah. Can you read again from verse 3 and lead it a little bit slower right now? For though we walk in the flesh, mm -hmm. we do not war after the flesh. Right. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, mm -hmm. but mighty. But they are what? Mighty. Okay. Through God. Mm hmm to the pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down of what? Strongholds. So they are what? Mighty for? The pulling down of strongholds. Okay, there you have your hair pulling right there. There you have your pulling down of the hair. Why do you, why do you pull down hair when you are fighting like a girl with a girl? It's because you want to bring them down. You want to bring them down. You want to bring them down so that when you give them their next left or right or their next kick, they're not able to withstand because when you pull somebody's hair down, you are weakening your opponent. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they are mighty for pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down of strongholds. What does the hair represent in the Bible? Beauty, grace. What does it all? What else? What else? What else? Hallelujah. Strength. Strength. That thing that is fighting you, that thing that is bothering you. The Bible says that you have the power. You have been given the power. Your weapon is not in the flesh, but in the spirit. The Bible says you have the ability to pull down that which is fighting you. Depression, you can pull it down. You can pull down depression. You can pull down anything that is coming against you in your life. The Bible gives you that power. When we say fight like a girl, find the hair, find the strength of that thing and pull it down. Find the strength of that thing and begin to pull it down in prayers. Yes, girls fight on their knees. But what does that mean? Why do you go on your knees? Not every single person that goes on their knees, they're fighting. But that means when I go on my knees, it's a position for me to start pulling down some strongholds. There's right the hair right there. And what does it say? What does it say again? Can we continue? Casting down imaginations mm. and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God mm -hmm. and bringing into captivity mm. every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Casting down. Casting down imagination and what every high thing okay that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God hallelujah casting down imagination. every argument can you go back casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God hallelujah 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 there you have your nails right there Casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to what? The obedience of Christ. The obedience of Christ. Before I give you all the points, I want to remind you of something. Every single word that you have heard today, some of you, this is not your first conference. This is not the first time you heard a word that you can fight like a girl, you have victory. And after hearing those words, you went back and it looks like you had to, you continue to struggle with the same problems. You continue to struggle with the same demons. And you wonder what is happening? Why am I not having victory over this? The thing about the word of God is this, you need to submit to it. You need to first submit to it before it can work for you. Now we say submit, but what does submission mean? What is submission? I know we live in a day and an age where the word submission by itself, it sounds like a bad word. But submission is a biblical word. And the Bible calls us to be submitted to the word of God. 
What does submission even mean? Submission is an act of submitting to authority or control of another. Meaning I have my own will, I have a way of thinking, but when I say that I submit, meaning regardless of how I feel about it, I'm still submitting to it. Regardless of what plan I had originally for me, but what the, if the word of God says opposite of what I was thinking, submission means I let go of my own will and I take on the will of the authority of the word of God upon my life. So the problem often is that we hear the word of God. Yes, when it is a promise, we receive it. We want it to see it come, come to pass. But the problem becomes we cannot submit to the entirety of, to the, of the word of God. We pick and choose what fits us. We pick and choose what it is that we like. So if I hear a word that does not go according to my way of thinking or my mindset or what I want or expect then I, don't, I feel like I don't have to submit to it. But the word of God, you cannot pick and choose what you submit to. You need to submit completely unto the word of God. The Bible says that even Christ had to learn obedience. Christ had to learn obedience. If Christ himself had to learn obedience, how much more the church? He had to learn it. He had to learn it. He had to learn obedience because of the things that were in front of him. Because of where he was going. Because of the promise of God upon his life. There are certain things that are happening in your life. The heartache, the trials that you are going through is because God wants to teach you obedience. God wants to teach you submission unto his word. The Bible said you shall not steal. But then we still steal when I'm very hungry. You, you say, I have a right to steal. Even though the word says, no, I can't steal, but when you are hungry and you have nothing to eat, you go and steal. That is not submission. Because now I am walking according to the desires of my flesh. Because the hunger is so strong, I cannot afford not to steal. The Bible says, do not fornicate, do not ad commit adultery. But because the opportunity presents itself, I forget about what the word of God says. If we are to be called Christians, if we are to be called the children of God, if we are to reflect the kingdom of God, we need to reflect. We need to submit to what the word of God says. We need to submit to what the word of God says, meaning I, that meaning I am posing an act of submission to the authority and control of another. In this case, in the authority and control of the word of God. Even when it goes against my own flesh. Even when it goes against my own desire. Even when it hurts. Even when it doesn't feel right to me right now. Even if it's not a popular opinion. But submission means that I am letting go of my own will. And I'm putting myself down under the will of that which has authority over me. But how often do we do that? How often can we say that I submit completely to the word of God? That what the word of God says not to do, I do my best not to do it. And if it's depending on me, I will not do it. How much effort do we put into trying to do what the word of God says, tells us to do? How often do we do that? Because some of our sufferings, there are trials. They are there to make us stronger. They are there to make us the person that we need to be in order to inherit the promises of God. The children of Israel, they were in the desert. The Bible says the reason why they were there is that God could teach them. There are certain things that you need to teach, to learn, in order for you to inherit the kingdom of God. In order for you to inherit your kingdom of God, meaning your promises... The promises of God over your life. But in order to inherit them, you need to become the person that God sees that you need to be in order to inherit them. None of us is perfect. None of us is without blame or without sin. But that's why God allows us to go through things so that he can break us, so that he can form us, he can mold us, he can make us into that image that he has for us. Submission to the word of God. 
We come to conferences. We come. We are powerful speakers. They speak unto our lives. And we hear, we say, amen. But then we wonder why it's not working. Why we are not seeing is because submission is missing. I want to pick and choose. I want to God to do what he said that he's going to do, but I don't want to do my part. I don't want to do what he tells me to do, but I want him to do what he says that he will do. How does that work? How does that work? For those of you in this place that have children that you love very much, you love your children, and you want to give them the best, and you promise them things. Sometimes there is something that they want you to do for them and you can't or you don't have the ability to do or there's no time. And you promise them, I will do it. But as a parent, how would you react that every time you promise your children things and you, you accomplish your end of the deal? But when it comes to you asking them things, they don't do it. So what becomes the deal? It becomes, okay, you do this, I'll do this. You do your homework, then we're going to go for ice cream. You clean your room, and then you're going to get new shoes. Hallelujah. So God is saying, when you come to a place where you can submit to my word, when my word becomes the, the final authority, the, 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 the only authority over your life, see what I can do for you. See how the things are going to come to pass into your life. Christianity is not a passive life. It is a life full of action. Full of action. Continuously there's communication between heaven and earth. Continuously. Continuously there's things that God is expecting from you. But how do you react towards those things? How do you react towards the things that God is telling you to let go? How do you react towards the things that God is asking you to take on? Do you have a submissive spirit? When it comes to the word of God, are you able to lay down your own will to take on the will of God over your life? The Bible says that Christ was in Gethsemane and it was so much pain. There was so much pain, the agony, because he could see what was going to happen to him. And he pleaded with the father, father, can you please let this cup pass? But what did he say at the end? He submitted. Submission is when you can say, father, not my will. But let your will be done. Not my will, but let your will be done. When you feel like reacting in a situation and God says, remain quiet. And you say, but Father, they have done me wrong. But God says, remain quiet. And you remain quiet regardless of how you feel. When the Bible says, wife, submit to your own husband. But you feel that it is unfair. But you can say, this is how I feel. And it makes sense for me to react like this. But the word of God tells me, the word of God tells me that's when the word of God becomes the authority that has the final say over your life. There is nothing that we can go through that you cannot find in the word of God. There is nothing that you can possibly go through that you cannot find an example of it in the word of God. There is nothing that you can possibly go through that there's not another soul in this earth that have gone, that have gone through it and have conquered. There is always somebody. There is always something. Because there's nothing new under the earth. But when we go through things, how do we react? How do we take our decisions? How do we make our decisions? How do we take even some, how do we make certain choices in our life? Is it based on the word of God or is it based on our own feelings? Is it based on what the word of God says or is it based on our own feelings? We cannot be walking in the flesh and expecting the word of God to come to pass in our lives. What does the Bible says in the book of Timothy, 2 Timothy? 2, Tim, 2 Timothy chapter, hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 5. Can we read that together? 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 to 5. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Yes. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, mm -hmm. proud, mm -hmm. blasphemers, mm -hmm. disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, 
high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Having what? Sorry? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power Sorry, thereof. can you repeat that again? I think my English is not really... Having can you say that again? Having a form of godliness, uh -huh. but denying the power thereof. Having the form of godliness, but what? But denying the power thereof. What does that mean? Having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Being called a Christian, but not believing that the power of God can actually transform you. Saying that you believe in God, but not believing that God can get you out of that situation. Saying that you love Christ, but not believing that his word is actually the truth that will set you free from every circumstance. Saying that God is almighty, but not believing that if I submit to his will, even if my own solution seems better than what the Bible tells me, but knowing that when I submit to him, he will make all things work together for my good. <laughs> believing, not being able to believe that his solution is better than my own solution for my life. Having a form of godliness but denying the power that is in that godliness. So we look like it, we dance like it, we sing like it, we speak like it, we come to church and dress like it, but it deep inside, I am not believing that that same power, oh, can set me free. Having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Therefore, people are slanderers, as it says. Therefore, people are gossipers. Therefore, people are drunkards because I believe that the bottle can appease me when I'm in trouble, but I do not believe the power of the word of God that it can give me peace in the midst of the storm. That's why we have Christians in church getting drunk. And saying, I had too much trouble. I had too much problems. I need to drunk. I need to smoke weed. I need to take marijuana. So I have the form of godliness. I confess Christ, but I do not believe in the power of the God to set me free. Having the, f hallelujah, the form of godliness. I've been going to church for over 30 years, but you're... <laughs> But the <laughs> No, let me talk to people over here. I've been going to church for over 30 years. But your attitude. And then you, you, you are proud to say, this is just how I am. Meaning that you are confessing that the power of the word of God cannot transform you. And this is why you are submitting to the opposite of what the word of God says. Having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Denying the power thereof is when you hear a word and you say amen and you receive it with joy. You receive it with tears and you say, that's mine. You write it down. But you go back home living exactly the same way you were living before. But denying the power thereof. Do we believe that there is power to transform us, to change us, to even bring solution in a difficult cases? Do you believe that your child that is an unbeliever that through your prayers and continuous obedience to the word of God, that God is faithful and able to bring them into salvation? Can you believe that the husband that has left you with seven children, five children, eight children, that by the power of the word, that God can transform him and bring him back home. Can you believe that? We cannot continue to come to church, receiving words, having conferences, but still we feel like we have to help God. 
I need to help God. They've been slandering me. I have to say something back. But he said, keep still. Keep quiet. For the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. But he says, the battle is mine. If you will give me the space, if you will trust me, if you will submit unto me, I can show you. God will never divide his glory. When you want to do it, he will let you do it. And the reason why you have been going through it for so long is because you have been doing it. There is no difference between you and me. No difference. We are all men of the same nature. But if we can overcome certain things, it's because you submit yourself to the word of God. We submit ourselves to the word of God, even when I don't feel like it. Sometimes I want to answer certain people a certain way, really. Because they get on my nerves. But then I go in the word of God. And I'm like, patience, love, kindness. <laughs> but my flesh wants to slap somebody over the face. I want to give somebody a good punch. But the word of God. But the word of God. What a word of God. You have the beauty like we were told. You can pass by and every man will come after you. And they are coming after you. But the word of God. Your word of God. You can do whatever you want. You can choose, but you have to choose. Either you follow God or you follow yourself. But I come to tell somebody today, you'll be following yourself for a very long time. And look where you have gotten so far. Look how far you have gotten so far. Look how far you have gotten so far. Can you give God a try? Give him. Let it over to him. Say, God, I will go with you. Even when my flesh doesn't feel like that. I feel broken inside. And I think I know a way to heal myself. But God, I trust you. I trust you. What you tell me makes no sense right now to me. But I trust you. That you will make a way where there seems to be no way. I trust you. Therefore, I submit to you. Therefore, I submit to you. My flesh wants to do otherwise, but I trust you. You can start receiving prophecies from, from now till 2050. But let me tell you, nothing is going to change when you have not decided to submit to God. Nothing is going to change. It's going to be a cover-up like we were told. You're just going to cover it for a few months, and then you're going to be right back there. Right there. You know why? Because the enemy wants to frustrate you. He wants you to leave the church and say that all these things that they say, they don't work. There is one formula, submit to the word of God. That is the formula. You need to submit to what the word of God says. Submission, very important. You need to submit yourself. If there is the best thing, you know, sometimes some women say, I can't submit to my husband because he's very unstable and he doesn't know what he wants. Today he says this, tomorrow he says that, and then he wants this and he wants that. And I, I have a hard time submitting. Not that I agree with that, but okay, we leave that alone. I can understand. I can understand. But why can't we then submit to the word of God? Because it doesn't change. It is stable. It has been proven over and over again to be reliable. It has worked for Ruth. It has worked for Naomi. It has worked for Esther. It has worked for David. It has worked for Pastor Eunice. It has worked for Mama Joanne down. So it has worked. It has worked. So what is your, why can't you submit to the word of God? It has proven itself over and over again to work. Over and over again to work. It has proven itself to work over and over and over and over and over again. Why can't we submit to it? If there is anything that is stable, if there is anything that will ever be stable in your life, it's the word of God. It's the word of God. So when you come to church, you come to receive. When you go back, you go back to put it in practice. That's what it is. 